Okay. Now, now we should be good here. First time we started uh -huh. it, my software said that it wasn't working on YouTube, but it, it actually was. Okay, probably crashed or... Anyway, we can start or is live or... Yeah, let's start it. I'll just give an intro to the camera. Hey guys. Okay, cool. Maybe you're checking this live or check it out on clips or our newsletter later. But today I'm having my chat with Lawrence like I've been doing for uh, over 10 years talking to different people that I work with in China about Chinese marketing, Chinese technology, and Chinese culture. We always have a chat before we put out the newsletter just to determine what's interesting, what's what's affecting things in China, and what's affecting marketing. So yeah, um, this time I'm going to talk about a couple pieces of news first. I'm going to talk about the WeChat ban, uh, what's going on with TikTok, and I'm going to talk about uh, Baidu's robo-taxis. And then after that, um, Lawrence is going to share some stuff about Juhu marketing. He was looking at what Siemens is doing on Juhu and how it works for them. All right, cool. Um, Lawrence, I am talking uh -huh. to you here now. Hi, Tate. Hey. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hi. Um, let's... Let's not look at this one first. This is the Juhu stuff. We're going to look at um, WeChat. Let's do WeChat first mm -hmm. and then TikTok. Sure. Right? So, yeah. you know, like Trump issued that order earlier about something about banning WeChat or banning TikTok, and it really wasn't clear what the heck was going on, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, it still isn't really clear what, what's going on. So what, what this article here says, I'll leave the links in our description later too, but it says that mm -hmm. a looming U.S. ban on the Chinese app WeChat won't target people who use the app to communicate, according to a government court filing Wednesday. And there's also a lawsuit going on, and the suit says that the ban violates its U.S. users' freedom of speech, free exercise of religion, and other constitutional rights. So that's kind of like we, what we heard earlier. There's a lot of opposition to this ban. And it's also not clear what's, how this ban is going to affect people. But now, based on this new information that's coming out, it looks like at least it won't be affecting regular users that are just using the app to, to message, to chat with their family or anything like that. Um, but then that still leaves the question of how it's going to affect businesses. Um, and if it does affect businesses, it's going to be affecting American businesses in a very bad way because pretty much any American business that is doing marketing in China and is trying to mm -hmm. sell stuff to China, they're going to be using WeChat, right? Um, mm -hmm. So that that's, this seems kind of counterproductive to what Trump is usually talking about. He's talking about U.S. is buying too much stuff from China and not selling enough stuff to China, right? So if you cut off WeChat, mm -hmm. if you cut off WeChat, the Chinese businesses, they can't, or, or sorry, American businesses, they can't reach Chinese consumers as easily. And it, it's really, it's just going to hurt them. Um, yeah. Anyways. I think anyways, one, we, one thing really to say is that um, for Chinese, I think we, we are kind of getting used to use VPN to connect it with American business or overseas business. But for, for you, for US, if they have been cut off on US, uh, on WeChat, so once they want to get in touch with uh, Chinese business, how are they going to do that? I, see, I think the WeChat is like everyone must have apps. But once you cut off the WeChat, like no American business is going to reach Chinese customer very easily. And that's just like counterproductive yeah. with what Trump initially thought. They want to sell yeah. product from US to China, but now they're just doing the other way. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying here, right? Are you, you're you're agreeing? Yeah, I agree with that. I just feel weird. Like Trump, like issued an order like back to August to ban TikTok and WeChat. Like it's yeah. been announced. Like, yeah, they first said, "Oh, we're definitely gonna ban the apps," but now they says, "Oh, as long as you're using for communication, that's fine." Right. Yeah, I say, what is the point for making such an order? Like. Right. I don't know. And, I don't and, get the point to that. I think a lot of uh, American businesses are kind of just waiting to see what will happen. Because um, I was chatting with somebody earlier today, somebody that works at an American business, 
and they use WeChat mm-hmm. for their marketing already. And they were asking me what they should do. And I was like, I have no idea either. I, I don't know what to do yet. We just got to wait and, and see what happens here. But I guess in, for for a um, long-term perspective of this, like not thinking about this WeChat ban in particular, but just this brings up a, a broader issue that whatever channel you're using for marketing, communications with people, that channel could become bad for you, right? I mean, yeah. your account your account could be shut down or blocked, um, or maybe the channel just doesn't isn't as good anymore, or maybe uh, WeChat in the future will change their policies. So if you want to reach more people, you're going to need to advertise to do it instead of getting so mm-hmm. much free mm-hmm. organic reach, or or who knows what, right? So it's always a good yes. idea to diversify marketing and spread it over a few different channels and especially use your own owned channels if you can like well in english marketing at least we use email newsletter sometimes in china you can do a bit of that too um your own website you know you want to use things that you you own when you can yeah i agree with that point i think there's a one chinese quote saying like don't put your eggs into one basket I mean, it's like you always do things in like optional. So you have to think like what else you can do with this marketing strategy, not only WeChat, maybe other tools like uh, video format. You can probably do on Bilibili or maybe on Juhu. Yeah, not always only focus on like WeChat. Yeah, there's a plenty channel in China to do. Yeah. Is that a Chinese saying? You said don't put your eggs in one basket. I, that's not a Chinese saying, is it? Yes, yes. Yeah, I think <laughs> the, the the Chinese word is a uh, <laughs> Okay, that's something like traditional. Like, okay, don't okay. put your egg into one basket. Yeah, if you have like plenty eggs, then just put it in somewhere. Like, if yeah. you have two baskets, then put your eggs in two baskets. The safe, like either okay. for investment, for marketing. Yeah. I don't know if that came from China though. It, it's not yeah, a Chinese. Came from China. It's not a Chinese. No, it's is not. It? It's it's not it's not a Cheng Yu. It's a it's a more like a slang. So it's like a Xie Hou Yu. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. That, anyways, that's what we yeah. do. Anyways. Yeah. Okay. Let, let's check this uh, this next one here. I'm going to talk about um, TikTok and Oracle for a little bit. Mm-hmm. I pulled up mm-hmm. a couple different articles. I picked picked out just just highlighted some parts of them. Uh, I'll read it out first. So. Basically, the Trump administration alleges that TikTok poses a national security concern because it gathers vast swaths of data from American users, which could be accessed by the Chinese Communist Party. Um, all right. So, really, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know if I, I don't know if I buy that really, because how valuable is that information that they're getting from teens? dancing and they're really digging deep into their phones to get other information i heard it's possible i don't know who knows right okay let's 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 move on tiktok has denied those allegations the company has said its data centers are located outside of china and none of that data is subject to chinese law all right so this this point here mm-hmm. <laughs> you know how how cynical i can get but but I don't believe them either, right? Because if they do have that data, if they if they are digging out tons of data from users that are on TikTok, then I think that the Chinese government would be able to get hold of it because they'd put some pressure on them and they'd get they just get what they want. That's that's what I think. Yeah, Next. I would agree on that. Like, if Chinese government really want those kind of data, like. This comes to one question. Why do you need those kind of data? Like people on TikTok are checking on like ladies' fun stuff. Like what's the point to have those? Like it's not it's not useful. Like why should I have that? Like targeting for market? I don't think so. No, 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 no. The, the, concern, the concern about data is that TikTok is able to like using my, my dummy non-technical way of thinking here, it's that TikTok is able to dig into the phone more and and get personal data from people. Like, for example, what they have 
copied and are going to paste or what, what's in their, you know, their copy paste notes or other things. And I don't know what it is. And I don't know if it's really, really valid. Let, let me read some more and I'll give a couple more thoughts and then talk. Um, yeah, sure. So reporting suggests that Oracle won't be able to buy TikTok outright, but given its expertise in data and cloud security, it could become the U.S. host of TikTok's data. And also, Oracle's chops when it comes to data and cloud security could also help allay fears in Washington. So, you know, what this makes me think about is just the regular arrangement that a lot of foreign, a lot of big foreign tech companies have when they enter China. You know, um, mm -hmm. when, when they enter China, they have to give up some type of... Uh, they have to give up some of their technology or they have to work with a partner within China that, that, that is going mm -hmm. to help control things. But also that partner is going to learn from them and it's going to make money from them. And China's basic pitch to those companies is that, well, if you want to come in China and sell to all of these, you, all of these consumers, this massive market, you got to give us some honey, right? Mm -hmm. And you're going to give us some share. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and this is what I think is the same thing is going on here. That's that's what it reminds me of from a business point of view is, you know, USA has a ton of users that are going to spend money and they're worth, they're worth a lot of money. And mm -hmm. Trump is like, oh, okay, TikTok, you know, like you get, you, you partner up with a U.S. company, they'll pay you well, but they're going to, they're going to get a big chunk of your profits. They're going to work together with you. That's kind of what I see here. So this feels like China style business going on in, in USA. Mm, I think from my point of view, it just feels very weird about what Trump just said about like all TikTok or those articles. I, I feel like it doesn't really make sense from a Chinese person's perspective. Like, like this is thousands of applications. Like, I believe some people are even use like Instagram or Facebooks. Even Chinese are using them. Like, never anyone has like argued that Facebook or Instagram is digging into our phone. And I, I, I'm pretty sure like mm. all those applications have that access to like okay. your access to the pictures, to your cameras, yeah. to your microphones, and that just comes to my mind. Like. Every application have the same access, like the TikTok or WeChat, and never right. anyone have ever mentioned anything about like Facebook digging into personal data or mm -hmm. Instagram doing that. Sure, but sure, sure. Why sure, it they, comes to like TikTok? Yeah, but they still don't allow Facebook to operate in China. Mm, yeah, I think I, I don't know why actually. As a Chinese, I yeah. don't know why like. What, what happened with Facebook. But yeah, that's something else. Huh. I just feel like mm, from my perspective, like TikTok is nothing, just an, just an application which is used for like, everyone is using it, it's very hot now. Yeah. I don't know why they just banned that so suddenly. Right. Okay, let's, let's check out a bit more on this. Um, mm -hmm. Huh. All right, so this there's this announcement mm -hmm. um, where the Chinese Commun Communist Party just released a document that <laughs> reveals plans for for greater control of of companies. It seems like it's kind of an awkward time with this TikTok stuff going on, but mm -hmm. what it says in there is something like this: is that we will raise and strengthen private enterprise figures and teams who staunchly and steadfastly walk together with the party and develop as one heart and one mind. Uh, okay. Mm. So that also, <laughs> like these uh, announcements from USA, that also is not terribly clear, really. It's not mm -hmm. it's not terribly clear what's going on or who's going to have to do what. And from, from my experience working on different Chinese apps, um, mm -hmm. when, when these announcements come out from the Chinese government, it may or may not actually affect the regulations that we have when we're uh, trying to get foreign companies set up and, and going in China. 
So we mm-hmm. kind of just, we take the news in or like, okay, something might change coming up, but then we just wait and see what happens with the specific regulations and the specific re- regulations might not be clear. It might just be, it might not even be published exactly. It's just, it's just when we go to start a advertising campaign on Weibo or wherever, mm-hmm. they have a, a new regulation um, or a new rule that we have to do. Actually, I would say for this kind of a sentence, I'm very familiar. I think that's as a Chinese, I really get what Chinese government is trying to say. It says in here is like, and de- develop as one heart and one mind. So I think yeah. that's meaning in Chinese is yi xing yi yi. So it means like everyone needs to focus on the same matters. You, you can't have the second thought on mm-hmm. something else. So I think in here, one heart and one mind means like all the companies, including like um, the Chinese company or the private sectors, you need to focus on like in China. Like you can't be, you know, leaning to overseas com- governments or countries. So you have to know that you are you are a Chinese company first. Then yeah. maybe you're a global company. So you started yeah. your business from China. So you have to always think about that. You are a Chinese company. It's like kind of having a nationality uh-huh. for those companies. But you know, like companies, you shouldn't have any, you know, nationalities. Like for Facebook, when talking about well, Facebook, you know, like everyone's they, using, but yeah. They could, they could, but it depends on how how it's implemented, what it actually means. So I, I found one that tells a, a bit more about what this what this means actually. Um, Mm -hmm. And it says that according to the new provisions, private firms will need a certain amount of CCP registered employees, which is already a long-term practice in large private firms, but not smaller ones. Also, communication channels will be set up between private businesses and the party to report back on progress and other matters. So Mm -hmm. what I'm seeing here, because I I heard that... um, larger companies might need a CCP representative within them, you know, but that doesn't mm-hmm. happen to small no. companies. So when they say smaller ones might need to have a CCP employee in them, I wonder how small they mean. Like, does that mean us, like a 20 person company, we're going to need to have somebody sit there and like, and like watch you guys and make, make sure our marketing campaigns for, for <laughs> <laughs> make sure our marketing campaigns on WeChat for, American businesses are being patriotic to China at the same time. Like that would be really, that would be a real hassle, you know? And, and I, and I don't know what value it would provide to anybody. Like, I don't know how that would meet their goals. I, I guess I'm thinking when I see this, when they're talking about smaller companies, they're not meaning 20 person companies like us. They're meaning like not the hugest companies, 100, but maybe, maybe 50 to a hundred yeah. or maybe like 500. That, I don't know. But, yeah, I think there's really need to a little bit justification on what is a small company. I think there's a difference between what like US think about the small company and what Chinese think about a small company is. Yeah. Like maybe a small company in US is around like 15 to 20 people like us. Yeah. And uh, if like China, I think when comes to my mind you talk about small company i will feel like 50 to 100 people that's a small company yeah. if under 50 I, I don't feel like that, that's a company maybe a very small like group of yeah. people i know yeah, yeah. I, I really think they need to expand <laughs> that a little bit more okay like, well i'll send you a very long government document later and you can check it out and see okay. <laughs> if it says how many but i i don't think it says how many i was i was skimming through it to see if i could find specific numbers of employees and i didn't i didn't see them yet but that that okay. thing you said Maybe, about yeah. the, the the sense of scale, I think, is very interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, like in China, there's a very different sense of scale than in than in Canada or or USA. You know, like like yes, here, I, we have like 1.4 billion people in China. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like like here, like the the word like city, right or Changsha. Uh, mm-hmm. I saw a city near Edmonton that described itself as a mid-sized city and it had like 40,000 people in it, you know, and 40,000. That's like, yeah. Yeah. And in China, in China, if someone comes, usually if I meet somebody and they come from a city that only has a million people or something, 
they'll be like, they they won't even say the name of it. They'll be like, oh, I come from some small town. Like, <laughs> it's in yeah, such that's such actually province. me. That's actually me. Yeah, okay. I, I came from like Intuan. It's a very small city. Oh, because you see here, small city. Okay, they yeah. only have like three million population, and I'm calling okay. it small cities. Yeah, yeah, but if you put in yeah. like when I was in, in like Sydney, the, then people talk to me. Oh, hey, Lawrence, where you come from? I say, oh, from China. They say, which city? I say, Intuan, a very very small town. Like, oh, how many populations there? I said, oh, maybe around three million. He said, oh, <laughs> that's what you call small city. <laughs> yeah, I've had that same conversation lots of lots of time with people, but I I don't know where that I don't know where that city is in China. I don't know. No, it, it, it's quite um, west uh, west now. It's very close to Xi'an, so probably six hours driving from in China to Xi'an. Hmm. Mm-hmm. In China to Xi'an. Okay, I've been to Xi'an, but mm-hmm. so wait, six hours? That's that's pretty far. Um, one hour flight. Maybe less than okay. hour, 50 minutes. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to the topic. I think we've been talking about too much, like small yeah, cities. Yeah. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Um, yeah. I like to. In, in one of these, uh, in some of these videos that we have coming up, I'm going to have Echo from Sinotrip, you know, where we have my, my other business, where we have a whole bunch of Chinese cities and tour guides all over the country, and they're not they're not employees of mine, right? They're just people that are listed on the site. And uh, we'll have her come on. She's going to talk about um, how, what it's like getting into China and the quarantine and how these tour guides are adapting and stuff. Okay, now let's move on. Um, Robo taxis, Baidu Robo taxis. So Baidu had their big event recently. And they, mm-hmm. they released a bunch of news about the different technology that they're working on and all this cool stuff. And, you know, Robo Taxis was one of them. They released another personal assistant and they've done, they, they have personal assistants and they have those little, even though those little mini robots and stuff that they've shown before. Uh, and the, all this is cool. We're going to talk about it. First, one thing I'll say is that me and the people, <laughs> the people, the Nanjing marketing group that do search marketing. We're just hoping that Baidu would give us some like really concrete new cool things. That's going to make our search advertising better, you know, like, uh, mm-hmm. like better, better targeting tools or just tying all of their, their search products to together better, or even just like speeding up the applications or anything. But no, Baidu is not really talking about search much. They're talking about AI, they're talking about vehicles. Um, they're talking about all sorts of different different things that they're doing in technology. And it is pretty cool. It just doesn't affect marketing much, but let's let's see what this is. So this this article that I saw said that um, China's biggest search engine, Baidu, has transported more transported more than hundred thousand passengers in autonomous vehicles as part of a robo taxi pilot program, and the number will soon surge to more than one million. CEO Robin Lee said. Okay, and the internet giant expects to expand its testing scope significantly as more regional governments ease restrictions. Last month, Beijing local authorities issued licenses for the company to offer rides to the public on 700 kilometers of roads in the city outskirts. Yeah, okay, that's cool. So what I see here is that Baidu is really in this in this race for autonomous vehicles, you know. And mm-hmm. as I as I reviewed a bunch of different articles about Baidu and their autonomous vehicles, something that came up a lot was comparisons to Tesla. People are saying, you know, maybe Baidu could even have an edge against Tesla here because they might be able to they might be able to do more of this, get more data in China than than Tesla would be able to do in China or or in USA because the Chinese regulations are going to be a bit more relaxed and they'll probably favor Baidu more and the amount of data you can get is really important for helping this AI system learn how to drive like a regular or drive better than a regular human and yeah um, but you know the automotive market in China and you know that's the kind of stuff better than me I don't know if you mm-hmm. have some thought some thoughts on this yet too um, 
Yeah, I think we can talk about this from a two point of view. The first is about why, like, Baidu has invested so much in um, autonomous driving. I think, like, since 2015 and 2016, since the Chinese government really trying to promote the industrial, Baidu started to invest huge money in the sector. And that's why you have seen a lot of latest news uh, about, like, Baidu has made a robot tax or mini robot or anything related to that. And the second thought is about autonomous driving. I think one key issue in here, I, I think is for all the industrial companies is to break through the knuckle of how those AI machines to learn about driving on the road for sure. Because we have seen a lot of news about um, like Tesla or either Tesla or uh, other autonomous driving system they might going to be faulty on the road. And one thing for machine to learn is to have a lot of tests. When I see a lot of tests, like it's more like a thousand tests. Maybe. And I think that's just come to an advantage of Baidu because Wait, we have hold, huge... Hold on, what, yeah. what, what do you mean tests? Test it means like you have to drive on the road. You have to use, I think yeah. it's called deep learning in, in the industrial. So you have yeah, yeah. to have the system on the road and let it run so it can sure. detect all the obstacles and learn from a Chinese traffic. Yeah. Because I think compared to the road in China and compared to the road in US or Canada, it's way different. Um, I think China's right. traffic is more complex than other countries. <laughs> so for, okay. for, for, yes, I think you, <laughs> I, I get it while you're laughing. Yes. Okay. <laughs> China's so traffic's more complex. Is, yeah. <laughs> yes, it's much way complex than Canada. Yeah. At least compared to Sydney, it's much way complex. Okay, back to the topic. I think one thing to say is that either for Tesla or Baidu, one thing they need to make sure is they have to give enough practice for the driving system to know how to make a decision when it comes to a problem in China, particularly yeah. in China's traffic. So I think Tesla I think it's great, but I think Baidu has more advantage in here because they can do more tests. They can do yeah. thousands of tests in China. Yeah. Like they can yeah. do tests like ten tests per day at least. Sure, sure. No, no, but I, I get what you're saying about that. Baidu mm -hmm. will have more tests, but you're you're not right on mm -hmm. a scale. The scale is not like thousands of tests. We're talking about like hundreds of millions of tests. Like yes, every yes. every ride that somebody takes is a test. You know, and and Tesla's yes, I think Tesla's AI is learning from the people that are driving the Teslas. Um, you know, like yes. just a little example. Like my friend bought a, a Tesla Model Three, and we were driving on the highway at 100 kilometers an hour, and uh, oh. it, it it had a little jolt, like like it stepped on the brakes for a second. <laughs> and oh, it's kind of scary because we're driving so fast, right? And it just stepped on the brakes for a bit. It's like, Shh! and then it, it just lurched forward. And we thought that's uh -huh. weird, but okay. <laughs> that's weird. We didn't die or anything. Um, it wasn't that bad, but it's kind of weird that it, it's, uh, it's autopilot thought something was off. And I know this, I, that the version of the autopilot that we're using now is not the same as the autopilot mm -hmm. that will be fully self-driving and such, but it, mm -hmm. the, the cars still are learning and, and passing that data back to Tesla. And in China, they're going to get more of that data. But I think one it's thing complex. is different. Uh, I think the thing you call it is called um, auto emergency braking system. So that's called AEBS. So that's a okay. trigger when there is an opt optical suddenly jump into the road. For example, just like you said, you're driving 100, meter, 100 kilometer per hour. And something just all of a sudden jumping into the road, like probably a cat, a pet, and yeah. the car would just break, like autonomously. Yeah, sure. But and that the thing about China, that, I gotta, exp you know, but maybe some people that yes. that watch this after they 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 don't know is that Chinese streets can be super busy, and there can be all mm -hmm. sorts of stuff going on. If you're driving on like a highway or or something like that, it's it's fairly regular. It's not so crazy, but if you're driving through the small streets, um, and and 
there are a lot of those in the cities. You know, you're driving through the small streets, all sorts of stuff can be going on. There's people jaywalking every which way. There's 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 bikes, um, and they're swerving around. And those buses, like the buses, don't always follow the rules. Sometimes they're just like, "I'm a big bus, I'm coming through," and you just gotta watch out, right? Yeah. Uh, so so um, that's that's a very and, and people that cross the street at weird times, like like it might just be a, there get to be a bunch of people. And they're not supposed to cross the street, but there's so many people on the side and then they just decide they're going to walk across and at cars and the, the AI system would have to get used to all of this. It seems like it'd be pretty hard to get used to. I think Baidu have two advantages in here. First is Baidu have their own maps. So maybe they don't have installed all the AI system into all the, all the manufacturer they've been working with. But like every every Chinese, at least uh, probably I would say fifty percent of Chinese net citizens are using Baidu map. So that yeah. means like Baidu can even collect those kind of data from normal users who don't even drive. So right. their passes, their actions. And the second thing is Baidu has been cooperating with many of uh, Chinese original equipment manufacturers, like Xiaopong and uh, others car manufacturers. Mm -hmm. So they have been installed the AI system into those kind of uh, new cars, new energy cars. Okay. So while those cars are running on the street, they are also collecting data. So they have more data compared with Tesla. Okay. Okay. And you you know this stuff because of your um, like that that market research you've been doing. Yes, I think uh, okay. we have been doing a research about the autonomous driving and the new energy yeah. vehicles. Yeah. I think I learned a lot of those stuff from yeah. that research report. But but I mean that that's you learned it from the research, or are you just a fan of this and and know it anyways? No, I was not really a fan about like auto driving. I was like before I did the research, I feel like oh that's something like nothing in common, nothing special. But mm. after I did okay. the, the research and I dig into the industry, I feel oh something cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um. Okay, let's let's move on to this next one. This will be the last thing that we talk about, but it could be a, it could be a bit longer. So you're gonna show me about uh, Zhuhu, right? And if we're looking mm -hmm. at in particular Siemens, uh, Siemens, which is Simmons. Siemens, yes. Siemens, Siemens, and yes. it's, you know a huge company, and they are doing some some marketing on Zhuhu, which is like Cora. So how about you tell me about that, and I'll, I'll try to show the right screens as we talk and you okay. um, let me know if okay. I'm in the wrong place. Okay, so currently I think this is um, an official main page for Simmons. So if you simply go to Zhuhu and you search the Simmons China, you will find this homepage. As you can see, they actually Simmons is quite popular in this. They have like, if you um, if you just move to a little bit on the right, you can see that uh, how many followers they have. They have 96,000 right. followers. Mm. That's like nearly 100,000. That's a lot of followers yeah. on Zhuhu. Yeah. And uh, yeah, probably you can just move them back to the main page. Yeah, move a little bit left. So from the top, you can see they have answered 113 questions. So they've been participating in all different kind of questions. And probably we can show one of them. I think I have sent you um, one answer. They talk about how they feel about working in Simmons. Sure, sure. So this question here, because Chuhu's a question and answer platform, kind of like Quora, but it's mm -hmm. different than Quora now already, right? But mm -hmm. th this one yeah. here, they're asking like, what is it like to work at Siemens, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So in here, um, Siemens, not answer the question by giving a lot of words to read or an article to read. Mm -hmm. you use a video format to uh, present three different people and they're taking three different positions mm -hmm. at Simmons. So they show the diversity okay. working at Simmons. So let, let me yeah. let me start this, but I just got to turn the sound down and want to start it. Yeah, just play the video first. You can you can tell us about it. I'll just let it go. Hey, this is like this is like uh, this is showing the time and the different people working. This is like the video we made and and posted on Douyin and it got really popular. Yeah, did you see that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yes, we talked see, about that. I saw right? that one. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I think this is what has been very good for Chinese marketing. So they are taking on the trend. They're catching yeah. on what is the fashion in China. So right. as you said, yeah, this is very hot in TikTok like a few months ago. And this answer was from like a, um, probably two weeks ago. And that's something that they've been doing. They're just catching on the trend in China because this is Q&A platforms in China. So they, they would rather use a video format because people like to watch mm -hmm. video rather than reading like a thousand words articles. And that's something like more suitable for Chinese marketing. And I, I personally like this kind of format because video is more presenting compared with the words. But when someone saying, oh, this is how I feel it, working at Simmons, you want to see some action like videos, the factories, the office, not like, oh, you talk a lot, but I haven't seen anything like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Well, you know, people people that come on Juhu, they mm -hmm. are, are looking for a certain thing. I mean, see, like Siemens might have followers on Juhu that have, that have mm -hmm. liked this content, but it might also be mm -hmm. people that were just searching for what it's like to work at Siemens, right? Mm -hmm. They I have, think, um, thir the, sorry, they, they have 13 people that like this content. Mm -hmm. But I think you can also check like how many people have saved as a favorite. I think one thing to say, as you just mentioned, some people like searching for like how to work or what it feel like at working working at Simmons. Mm -hmm. I, one thing to mention is that a lot of university students are actually using Juhu, and they might use this platform as um, not only a Q and A platform, maybe a job seeking platform. As you maybe yeah. scroll down a little bit to these answers, well... you can say that you can see on the bottom the second line of here is follow on Simmons 2021 uh, yeah. school campaigns. Yeah, uh, I think you can stop. Join the Simmons. So that's a recruiting website. So actually, it's not only for like showing how you feel at working Simmons, but also like, oh, this right. is, uh, we are recruiting and you can probably join and see how you feel, it, feel at mm -hmm. that. Right. And then they also have their, their Weibo, their WeChat, their Billy Billy. Yes. So uh -huh. yes. Siemens is active on a lot of different platforms, right? Yes. Simmons is, I think they're using all the mainstream platforms to, mm. I think, to do the marketing for Chinese users. Right. Okay. So if, if anybody saw us talk before about um, the Douyin videos that we made when I was talking about hiring, um, they might have noticed that we had something like, I think it was 16,000 likes on one of the videos and like 20 or 30,000 on another. And, and this one has 13. So does that mean it's not, I'm going to answer my question here, but does that mean it's not valuable? Um, I, I would say no. I'd say that this could be very valuable if it's the person that's looking at it is somebody that is qualified to work for Siemens and would bring them benefit. And that person is seeking this information. Uh, just, just that one person, you know, one potential employee that is the right person that sees this content and it influences them to, to work at Siemens, that would be mm -hmm. enough value for this post. Yes, I agree on that. So um, I think a lot of people, they just saw this, maybe click into the recruitment website instead of liking these videos. So I think there's something different with like Yeah, Quora. yeah, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Right, because we don't know, we know how many people liked it, but we don't know the other metrics here about it. We don't know how many people yes. clicked through, you know, or if Siemens, we don't really know if Siemens strategy is really good here. There there are other answers here too, though, right? I mean, like somebody, yes. I think somebody asked, jump in. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so somebody asked what it's like to, to work at Siemens. Siemens posted an answer themselves, and it's one of the top mm -hmm. ones. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. other other people posted their answers too. Did Did you read these ones? Yes, I did. I think these are some like from a point of uh, staff who are working at Simmons. I think the 
I think the second one we have seen. Um, maybe you can stop right here. Yes, we, we can see. Yep, yeah, stop right here. The first one is a Nancy. <laughs> like she says, she okay. has been. Yeah, yeah. This, we this got we got, we got a bit of a delay. I I, I already stopped like five seconds ago. <laughs> okay, uh, that's okay. why. Okay, uh, Nancy is talking about like she is just getting to the company for like two weeks, and yeah. uh, she is taking charge of import and output. So she says. Uh, if you are a bachelor degree and I come to this company, you will feel like very boring because you just clock in, clock out on mm -hmm. time, and you feel like you're doing nothing special. Uh -oh. um, and Simmons is a very big company, and uh, like many people have been working on the same position for like 10 years or 15 years, and maybe not get promoted or didn't get higher pay, and just getting very bored. And I mm -hmm. think that's just one perspective. And uh, the second user is called Me Too Curry. Uh, I hope I made that correct. Um, I don't think this person is working at Simmons, but he says it's more about personal feelings. Like everyone may make different decisions and I feel different. Like the, the, the point is, um, do you like this job or not? It's not about Simmons or not, but if you work probably at Tesla, if you like the position, then it's good. Mm -hmm. If you work yeah. at Tesla or maybe even Facebook, they got, you got very high paid and you, you don't like the job that's like feel nothing to you. I think uh -huh. this is getting something different. They starting okay. to talk about Simmons first, then they're talking about like a career and the future. Right. The answer is they, they mentioned um, Siemens and Tesla they didn't mention Nanjing Marketing Group. Uh, I think we're not too famous. Probably <laughs> we, we should be working on that. Yeah, yeah, we'll have to get more famous I, on on Billy Billy and Douyin and stuff. Yeah, yeah, we take some time. I think one day we will see ourselves on Jubu. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, we're there too, but not at the scale that Siemens is. Um, because because that that question that we looked that answer that we looked at only thirteen people like it, but. Back to their profile, mm -hmm. Siemens has posted a lot of content, and some of them have yeah, a ton of comments. This this one up here near the top, this has uh, 3,300 people liked it, 120 comments. And then, again, they have almost mm -hmm. 100,000 fans, which is pretty cool because, you know, I don't think people are using Quora like this. Like, mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. think people... I don't think so many people are using Quora in the way they're using Jahu, where they're following brands or accounts on a regular basis and seeing the content all the time. I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong, but I just mm -hmm. I have haven't felt that in the Quora community through my own usage, and I have used Quora quite a bit. Okay. You want to look at this next question? Uh, this other one you should. Yeah. Have? Yes, please. I think the next question is much more fun. Okay. okay, so this question is about home furniture. What is the most <laughs> regrettable thing you have ever done when yeah. you're doing furniture at home? So when talk about mm. this question, I think it's um, not only targeted to like one person. Oh, I'm sorry, Tate, can I get my plug-in? I think my laptop is running out of the battery. Okay, sure. I'll be right back. I'm back. Okay. Sorry for the delay. Okay. Uh, let's move back to the topic. So I think when talking about um, furniture and home furniture, like everyone must do a furniture at homes. And in here, this is a very hot discussion. Mm -hmm. As you can see under the topic, there is a yellow yellow line. It says it has been collected into a certain of files. So that means this answer, this topic is very hot and it's being discussed uh, very broad in the community. Okay. 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 So, because, hold uh, on. Th this, this, user, yeah. this, this selection was done by editors within Jahoo, right? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Okay. Go so ahead. This, this topic, this discussion has been collected into a very broad topic. 
Okay, so this user is asking like, uh, recently I'm doing a furniture and uh, uh, do, do anyone have any good suggestions? And here's Siemens answers. We know that Siemens has a lot of product, not only in kitchen or like fridge or some of that, but they have more productive like mm -hmm. semi-product uh, or something else. And here Siemens give a very good answer like about furniture from your bathroom, bedroom, your kitchen, to yeah. every corner of your furniture. So that's okay. something I think a lot of people like to say, because when it comes to something professional, they may, they, they have no idea. So in here, Simmons says, um, you, uh, if you can stop right there, they say, after you live in, you need to have certain skills. And here they're starting from the entry, like their own locks, uh, the smart lock, and then about getting into the house, uh, okay. they getting a picture about what kind of a part you need to install or to do yeah. the furniture. I think that's very a good answer. As you can see here, like um, 149 people in the in the left bottom, there's 149 people like and agreed mm -hmm. on these mm -hmm. um, on these answers. And uh, if you can screw up, you can see like how many people like the answer actually. Uh, yeah, yeah, I saw, I saw that. Uh, like 149 people liked it, it says. Yes, uh, 149 uh, agree and uh, like these answers. And uh, yes, so I think that's something what Simmons has done different with the, the video we have just seen. On the video, they have... Yeah doing one option, but in here, they doing things in a different way. So they're giving picture and mm -hmm. uh, a more traditional way of like answering a question. But this okay. is a very good format as well, because okay. this is something professional. But let's, let's check out this question and the answer style a bit. Um, it's a good question. Mm -hmm. um, and it says, you know, what about renovating your house? what do you mm -hmm. uh what do you regret most I, I, mm -hmm. now that i think about it um this word regret I, I just see it used more often in china than i do see it in, in canada or used in english i'm not sure mm -hmm. why is there a, is there a trend related to it or maybe not um i think the reason for that is probably maybe i guess um, is it just an assumption uh, a lot of people when they're doing renovating at home or furniture, furnishing at home, that is the first time. And they may not get very good advice from, um, let's say, their parents or their friends. So they may yeah. have done something wrong. I think one thing different um, compared to like Canada and China is if you buy an apartment uh, in, in Canada, you will have like full facility. You have your towels on. You have house furniture already. All you have to do is buy some like bed or the tables. But in China, you got nothing. You have to like do the whole renovating first. Okay. Then you have okay. to move into the apartment. So okay. I think. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So you're right. People that might be listening, they might not understand that. But in China, when you buy an apartment, you don't get a, you don't, it's, it's not all nice in there with, with, uh, carpets and floors and, and paint and the kitchen ready and and everything. It's yes. just, it's basically like a concrete cube. Yes, you know? that's correct. Concrete I, I call it a, a good it's a concrete plan. cube. And then, and then you got to go in there and you got to get your renovation done. And that's mm -hmm. why sometimes in our office or in other places in China, where, wherever you are, like whether you're in an office or a house or whatever, you're going to hear a lot of drilling, right? Just because it's <laughs> renovating. Because yeah, because they're 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 drilling and into the wall, I guess, and that mm -hmm. sound just reverberates through through the building. Sometimes it's really loud. Mm -hmm. Like when we first moved into that office that you were there, and now there's just drilling all mm -hmm. the time. It, it drives us crazy. Um. So so everybody just renovates, you know, and and they don't do do it yourself, either. They get somebody to come in and and do it for them and renovate the whole place. So it's a, it's a big it's an expense, and it's a big decision of uh, what to do I, to your apartment. I think it's it's 
very big decision and the price for renovation could be low and could be higher it really depends on your budget and if some yeah. for, for instance you know that how expensive chinese apartments are and after the property yeah. they bought the apartment they might run out of the budget to do the renovations and if the budget yeah. is too low then maybe they will feel very terrible after they're getting rich they will feel oh why did yeah. i do renovation this way this is terrible and yeah. i think that's the time when they feel like regret it yeah so so this question either through the language used in the question or otherwise is specific to the Chinese situation. So I don't think that yes. I don't think that Siemens took this content from somewhere else. Like they didn't take their renovation content post from Quora that was used in it was used in Quora on in English and like translated to mm -hmm. Chinese and posted it here, right? They they must have yes. they must have found this question uh, and then wrote something custom for it to help people understand you know, to, to wait, what do you think is the, the the reason for this post? I mean, are they are they selling things? Is there a call to action here or or anything? Or do they want people to follow them or what? No, I don't think this is a call to action. It's more about sharing and build a brand awareness for Simmons. I think the one thing for those companies getting into China, if you want to really be success, uh, one thing I think they should do is to get into the people. So let people know about your brand. I'm pretty uh -huh. sure like Siemens is a very famous global brand in China, but still like a lot of people don't know what kind of product you have. And uh, in here, Siemens show a different way to presenting them. So they're showing that oh, we're not only mm -hmm. a famous global brand and we have uh, actually a lot of other stuff going on in here. So maybe you can have a look. So this is not mm -hmm. call to action. It's about brand okay. recall. Okay, hold, so, hold on, hold on. What, what instance, I'm what, yep. You might have missed my terminology here. What, what I mean is, the call to action on a, a piece of content or a landing page or whatever is the thing that you mm -hmm. want people to do. It's the thing you want your readers to do. And here at the bottom, I see they have this this link, link. to uh, mm -hmm. some kind of uh, furniture and electronics uh, white paper. Mm -hmm. And you click that, you yes. come through here, and it's, it's hosted on Sina. And now mm -hmm. you can find more information. Mm -hmm. So So they are putting people through their sales funnel yes they do so but i think you have to look this answer another way i think it's common for those companies to embed a link into their answers and direct mm -hmm. them to sales but also i think is focusing on trying to build the brand awareness because a yeah. lot of people may not really going to read the whole article themselves to read these answers they may just click into a read of first paragraph or a second paragraph, then they yeah. stop. And that's something I think they want to do. But also they have put a link in here for people who want to do the project and mm -hmm. then they come to Siemens. Yeah. Okay. Well, it it's interesting to see Siemens posting this content on Jahoo and building up this following and doing it on other places too. Uh, not not yeah. all brands will do it so well. A lot of them will ignore these opportunities because mm -hmm. their big brands especially are often used to spending more money on advertising. So they'll spend money on advertising and that is a renter's mindset because when you buy advertising, you're not really buying it, you're renting it. You're renting some space for a certain amount of time or a certain number of clicks or whatever. But when you create content and post it online, then that is something that you that is an asset to you. That's something that you own. Um, and, and I know from talking to marketing people in all sorts of companies that not everybody is able to master those two different mindsets. You know, I mean, some of them, they're just thinking that renters mentality and they want to spend money this month and they want to see the clicks or the leads or whatever it is this month, but they're not posting content and then watching carefully how many leads or clicks or, or impressions interactions this content generates over its entire lifetime which could go for uh, it could go for a year or 10 years or something I'm sure I've said that before <laughs> you, you get what I'm saying right? or, or not yes I do okay 
I, I, I do. I think one thing you said very important is like, like for those big companies, you do have enough budget to run advertising, not only to the current months, maybe to the future. So they care more about on the future, on what they have to do for the next year or next two, three years. But for small companies, they would just rather care, oh, how many leads I can get this month? How many sales I can, mm, I can, no, no, I hold can on, hold down on. for this? But, yep. That's, that's not quite what I'm saying. I'm saying... I'm saying some of the big companies will have the mindset of just for advertising and they won't produce mm -hmm. content like this. Uh, oh, small yes. company, small companies can be the same way, but it's a little bit different because it's, I, I won't get too into it. Let's just say, let's just say that not all big companies are going to be creating a, as much value in the content that they create for their users as, as Siemens is doing in this kind of content they're putting on Jahoo. Yes, particularly I, I will have to say one thing is original content. So you have from Siemens itself, yeah, a copy paste from other places, right? From Siemens itself, specifically for their potential customers, their customers, their employees, potential employees in China. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, what would you say the tone of their content is? You know, like. Um, or their style, like like what what is their style of conversation that they use on Juhu? Are they being very professional or conversational, or are they being friendly or or funny or serious or or what? Like like how is it? How does it make you feel, or how is it supposed to make their readers feel? I think it's between professional and a conversational. I think. For today, the two answers we shared to um, I shared to you. The first in video format is more friendly and a conversational. It's about okay. sharing stuff. But when talking about the second question uh, about furniture, I think that's something Simmons do in professional, and that's when they have been playing their roles to act as a professional to answer the question. So okay. that's very professional answers. But when trying to talk about something irrelevant to what the professional are, they're trying to be friendly and a conversational. Well, you know, I didn't, I didn't notice a lot of emojis. <laughs> I, uh, what I mean is that stickers, right? Uh, yeah. You know, emojis, like a, a lot of brands in China will use emojis everywhere, but, but not on Jahoo. Mm -hmm. Jahoo is a more of a place to come and, and find knowledge so mm -hmm. they're not getting too i mean the content doesn't seem to be written in the style that it would be for for weibo i'm talking about juhu but i'm also talking about other content like the content that that we write for projects mm -hmm. etc it is uh of a style that is suitable for juhu so i think the answer you're showing now is about something like i don't even know so i think I checked on these yeah. answers. They have answered this question very, very professionally. I think if you're not in the industrial, you don't really be able to understand what Siemens is trying to say. Uh -huh. And this is just one perspective of what Siemens is trying to play. So mm -hmm. when they're talking about something very professional, only existing in the industrial, they will write them only to the readers in the industrial can say even this question is very very hard to understand but still it got like three thousand people to like this answer and that's incredible yeah. so this is talking about like the the teeth on gears mm -hmm. uh, yeah okay so this does get very in depth <laughs> and it has three thousand yes. some like, likes on it yes i think this is something like you say on um uh, magazine i think like academic magazines not uh -huh. only on like um, a newspaper or something like that because it's too in-depth like no more people will have no idea what you're talking about yeah that's okay they don't need normal people they need people that are interested in, in this topic right mm -hmm. yes i think that's just they're using different ways to answer the questions for different mm -hmm. type of people the okay. type of people who like to watch a video and there are people who maybe focus on furniture renovation and homes and maybe yeah. there are people like 
this who likes to read something very professional and very academic. Okay. Okay. We, we've been talking for a while. I still want to ask, talk about one more, one more thing though. Um, just, just related okay. to Jehu. Do, do you use Quora, Lawrence? Uh, I use Quora for, I would say, half a year, I think. Then I okay. stopped. Okay. So I use Quora and I use Jehu sometimes. I use Quora a lot more. And from my experience using the two platforms, what I feel about Jehu now is that um, Jehu seems more professionally oriented. Uh, now, Quora went through a certain certain changes over its life cycle. Like there was a stage on Quora there for a while where I thought the site was just, I thought it was just beautiful. Every, all the responses that I saw were, were could be quite insightful. And the, the comments mm -hmm. and the interaction on there, it really did feel like the, the best, most interesting, most expert content was being voted to the top. And then Quora got more mainstream or something happened and they made some changes to their algorithm and they just started showing me lots mm -hmm. of shock content that I might look at, but I didn't like or anything. <laughs> and a lot of people came on there and they just give more and more stupid answers. So I, so I actually don't mm -hmm. use Quora as much as I used to, but, but I feel like Jehu is still in a sweeter stage where they have the, the right types of users on there. And th that's also why we use it for marketing sometimes because they, they have these people that are really looking for the best information and they're often mm -hmm. white collar workers. They're often in first tier cities. They are the people that are working in small or, or big businesses and they're making decisions. So it's really good to get that content out there for, for them to read. That's, that's kind of my feeling about Jehu and Cora, you know, not, not going into the specifics of uh, features and stuff, but it just does feel a little bit different. Um, I would agree on that. But uh, things, I haven't really used Cora for a long period of time. So I don't yeah. really get the feeling of, as you said, that it was beginning with a very professional, insightful knowledge. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. it started to become like shocking news only to attract your eyes for like a second then you just get off there yeah. just too boring yeah and um i would say uh, maybe there is a trend probably i don't know but on juhu now uh, i would also say some like stupid answers for sometimes but there's oh, one thing i think different from there yeah, are from yeah. like a quora and the juhu is uh you can actually select those kind of uh, information so what kind of information you're interested in. So for example, if you're interested in knowledge, so they will just keep, it's more like on TikTok. They were just keeping posting same knowledge stuff, very professional stuff to you. But if you always read like stupid answers, so you'll get more stupid answers. So I, I think okay. you can yeah, see yeah, here, you're talking about that. Like, right, you're talking about the, how you behave on the site and the algorithm adapts to you, right? Yes. Exactly. But it's, I know, but I, I'm just talking about from my personal experience. When I'm on some sites, like for example, YouTube, I seem to be able to train YouTube based on what I watch and what I like. Mm -hmm. And then YouTube gets it and it starts showing me more of what I actually want. Whereas Quora mm -hmm. would show me not what I actually want, but just what I click to see, read more, you know? So. Mm -hmm. I see, yes. I see some terrible stuff on there or, or just some stupid stuff. Like I got trapped in the Quora. Uh, I got trapped in there looking at this person versus that person. You know, it'd be like, what if Darth Vader fought Thanos? You know, what what would happen? Like, and, and oh, I got, yeah. I think I got trapped in it. And like, I started clicking those ones and not even liking them. And then it kept showing me more and more. I have the same feeling sometimes using Juhu. Like the, the, because I, I was a fan of basketball and they always talk about like, how do you feel about if LeBron versus Michael Jordan? I feel like, oh, yeah. they're not they're not even in the same century. Like how are they gonna have a battle? And then huh. people starting to show the stats of LeBron and the Michael Jordan only compare with them. Just, just weird. Okay. We just keep trying and keep reading that. Okay. 
that's interesting you used the word century there but uh, that's cool okay um let's let's uh let's wrap it up here so we've been talking for a little over an yeah. hour or whatever i didn't know if we had enough content this time i i thought we might be out in like half an hour uh but i like this format we, we talked about a couple news items and then went more in depth into one of those things okay i'm gonna yes i think this week we've, we've been talking very in depth like in past, we share more news, but this week we share relatively less, but more in depth. Cool. I'm going to talk to the uh, camera for a second. Hello, camera. Um, this has been an episode of our live show talking about China marketing, tech, culture, China, China, everything, China, anything. And um, if you check this on YouTube later, you might just see one clip. If you like it, give us a like, give us a subscribe. And see us next week. I'll see you later. See you guys. Bye-bye. I leave it on a little bit extra on YouTube so it doesn't cut it off. Yes, I noticed that. Like you, you did, you did that like last week and the week before. I think this week is is more like, I think the style of this week is more like the way you wanted to do in the beginning of uh, live streaming. It's more like the yeah. the podcaster you you sent to me. Uh, what's the yeah. name of what's the name of him? The one that I said one, I don't like. Like that one yeah, was uh, the one Lou, to, Lou later. Uh, Yes, and absolutely. Willie. Yes, and, and, his, and his friend Willie Do there. Yes, I think this is the way you want, isn't it? it it's like starting to work. Talking. It's starting to work. Got to get better. Keep trying. Yeah. Yes, but I feel like you're happy to. You're happy for today. At least I feel like that. Yeah.